Lecture 6-1 Rocks. Now last evening we talked about minerals, and minerals had five characteristics that every mineral must have. Rocks don't follow these. Not all rocks have crystals. Not all rocks have a definite chemical composition. And not all rocks are inorganic. There are some rocks which are formed from once living things. So rocks and minerals, of course, make up the surface of the earth. Rocks are described by the minerals they contain. So minerals make up rocks. And the minerals that make up the rock give the rock its color, its texture, its size, and the shape of grains. And grains are kind of the pieces that make it up. Now rocks are divided into three groups depending on how they form last. Now this last is the key because rocks, the material that makes up the current rocks we have, could have been a type of rock before. Uh, our three main types are igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. And a rock that was igneous today could have been a sedimentary rock once before. The same material kind of gets recycled to form new rocks. Now, igneous rocks, the first type of rocks, form from a molten state. They are melted, so they are either formed from magma or lava. So these are our types of rocks that are formed from volcanic eruptions. They make up most of the crust of the earth. They are usually very tough, though not all of them. A sample would be pumice. Pumice is actually a pretty weak rock, but it's formed from a volcanic eruption. There are two main types of igneous rocks, so all igneous rocks form into one of two kinds. Intrusive forms inside the earth, and it'll have large crystals because it'll cool very, very slowly. Because it's warmer inside the earth, and so it's very slow to cool. Now, extrusive is where it forms outside the earth, and so we're talking about volcanoes. And this one will have small crystals because it will cool very quickly. The lava will come in contact with cold air or water or even another piece of land. And that will cool down much more quickly than it would inside the earth. And so the crystals tend to be a lot smaller. There's even a certain type of rock called obsidian, which is an igneous rock formed from lava. But because it forms so quickly, no crystals form. And it actually looks like glass. So granite and basalt, we talked about these. Granite makes up most of the continental rock. Basalt makes up the oceanic crust. And these are igneous rocks. They are very different in how they look because they form differently. Now look at these samples in the classroom. The second type of rocks is sedimentary rocks. Now I want you to look at the word here. Sediment is part of this rock and so that's very important. Because sedimentary rocks form from the compaction, sedimentation of sediment. They form from pieces of other rocks or they form from once living things. They can form from seashells. We have a sample in the classroom called coquina. And this sample actually came from South Carolina. And you can see that it's made up of crushed, compacted seashells. Now there are three main types of sedimentary rocks. Classics, chemical, and organic. Classics are formed from pieces stuck together. And so sandstone is one type of this. And sandstone is made of pieces of sand. Uh, these look like little tiny pieces all stuck together. They can be smooth, they can be rough, but they're all compacted together over time. A uh, similar sample to sand, sandstone is siltstone. It's actually made of finer pieces than sand, so smaller. Another form is chemical. It forms from a solution out of water. Limestone is one of these key ones. It forms from something that contains a lot of calcite in a solution. And when it forms into a rock, we can get limestone. Now, limestone can also be organic in nature. So this is one type of rock that can either be found as a chemical or organic rock. Um, and org organic just means it was from once living. So coal, limestone, and that um, coquina technically would all be considered organic if they're formed from once living things. Limestone, it depends on the process, which one it is. And actually, by looking at a limestone rock, oftentimes you can tell, is this a chemical limestone or is it organic? Now, sedimentary rocks cover most of the surface of the earth due to the weathering. The igneous rocks that form from volcanic eruptions get broken down by water and wind, and they end up forming sedimentary rocks. Now, it's a weaker rock, but it's the only one to contain fossils. Oops. So, if you find any rock with a fossil in it, it's a sedimentary rock. The process of forming an igneous rock or a metamorphic rock would destroy any fossils in it, whereas sedimentary rocks, the process that forms them, allows fossilization to occur. 
So if we look in the classroom, we have the big sample of uh, coral reef that's been fossilized. It's a type of limestone rock. It contains a fossil. And so we have a lot of samples of this in the classroom, so make sure you look at those. But again, any rock that contains a fossil has to be a sedimentary rock. And the last and third group is metamorphic rocks. Now they are a changed rock or a metamorphized rock due to heat and pressure. Intense heat and pressure can change a rock, change the crystal growth, change the properties, its strength, its density. And so these are strong rocks because of this. They were igneous or sedimentary rock before, and now they become metamorphic because they're heated underground. There are two main types of metamorphic rocks. They're either banded or non-banded. Banded means that crystals appear in layers when heated like a striping effect. And so you'll actually see kind of little stripes on the rock formed from the different crystals in there, the different minerals that make it up. Non-banded means it's going to be irregular, it's not going to maybe a solid color, but we don't see this banding effect. Now, key examples of metamorphic rocks are nice and marble. Again, this is pronounced nice. Now, marble rocks, you think about what you hear marble used for, countertops or statues. And the reason why it's used for that, it's a very, very strong rock. And the reason why it's strong is because of the process that forms it. The immense heat and pressure that underwent forming the marble rock compacts it enough so it's a very dense rock, a very strong rock, hard to break. And that allows it to be useful then in those ways. So three main types of, types of rocks, igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic. And we'll eventually talk about the rock cycle, which is how those rocks, the materials that make them up, moves from one form to another form.